This week, episode 293 of Stogie Geeks. We're going to talk a little bit more about there's been some progress on Senate Bill number nine. If you don't know what that is, we're going to talk about that. We're also going to interview Wayne Clark of Hiram and Solomon Cigars, get his take on the industry. They got some new uh, sticks coming out at Hiram and Solomon right here on this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome back to Stogie Geeks, or welcome to Stogie Geeks. I am your host, Joe Hosempa. Thank you for tuning in. We are live, stogiegeeks.com, and we are also on that Facebook super awesome interweb thingy. We have a guest today. His name is Wayne his company is no stranger to the Story Geek Show. However, excited to hear his take on the industry. Wayne is the general manager for Hiram and Solomon Cigar Company. Uh, interesting uh, concept, interesting company. He's going to bring us up to date as to what's going on with the company. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Senate Bill Number 9. And I'm super awesomely excited can tell I'm from Rhode Island. I'm super awesomely excited about this bill. And I believe that from two weeks ago till uh, this week, and, and, and we, we have a lot more traction, and we're starting to get a little bit more definition as to what the hell a cigar is. I'm excited. I mean, I didn't know what I was smoking for all of these years. Uh, we're going to get into that. So anyway, Wayne, welcome to the show. How are you? Doing great, brother. How are you? How I'm are doing you? good. I'm doing good. I heard that you're hailing from Queens. Is that is that where you are? Or Bronx? Where are you? I am in I am in beautiful Queens, New York. Nice, nice. What are you doing over there? Looks like you're you you, you got you got a fan club behind you. Not well, behind you know, you, we're, we're doing a live show. I'm at Harry's Havana Hut uh, here in Bayside, Queens, uh, right off of Bell Boulevard. It's a live show. I've got some, got some guys watching over there. Going to have a little fun today. It is a lot of fun. I, I've, I did a live show for Stogie Geeks back in um, April. I believe it was April, all first week of May of 2018 when, when, when I was in Florida. And I did it on Los Alas Boulevard. A place in Fort Lauderdale called Havana Republic, and it was super fun, super cool. I was able to Skype back in. Uh, I do know that background noise can be kind of tricky and whatnot as you navigate through that. Uh, the worst is when it's like you're gonna talk to me and we're gonna answer questions, and like people are gonna want to come up to you and shake their, your, your hand, and it's like, don't you see? Like I have this computer in front of me and whatnot. It's so funny, right? You know, it happens all the time. So you know, all, all the time when you know when when you get to be as as uh, big and famous as you are, uh, I'd imagine people are, you know. Always asking for your autograph, inter- interrupting the show. You know, uh, it's what? tough. It's wow. tough. You know what I mean? No one asks me. I walk in, I walk uh, into a cigar shop and they're like, it's him. It's him. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one I was telling you about. You know what I mean? I feel like freaking. I feel like Rizzo on Greece. You know what I mean? Freaking. For those of you who don't know Rizzo on Greece, that means you're a little bit young. But I thank you for tuning in on 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 Stogie Geeks, right? <laughs> for sure. Um, what do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about this bill first? Or you want to talk about Hiram and Solomon? You want to talk about your your take on the industry? What you're looking forward to for 2019? 
Uh, wh- whatever you want to talk about first, you pick. Well, well, let's let's uh, let's talk about first what I'm smoking here because I I love this cigar. This is a uh, oh touche. Yeah, good good move. Hiram, Hiram and Solomon Fellow Craft. Mm. Uh, it's a beautiful Habano Oscuro uh, made in Nicaragua. Actually, was the number two cigar of the year uh, a couple of years back. So this is what I love to start my day with. Um, but in terms of what we've got going on as a company, uh, as you guys know, we're, we're a boutique company. We're um, on the small side, uh, but we do have some exciting stuff happening. Um, we just released a brand new size of the Traveling Man in a Lancero. And I know there's a lot of Lancero nuts out there uh, that are going to love this cigar. It's an Indonesian Sumatra. It has a beautiful uh, little bit of spice to it, just that Sumatra uh, burns so well on that Lancero. So uh, we're really, really excited about that. Uh, we also have, uh, we released it about just before the show, a new size of the Veil Profit, which is a Brazilian Arpiaca, nice full body. Um, previously, it had only been available in a 7 by 60 coffin. And what we did, we released it in a Toro uh, and made it more accessible to the shops that don't have the most shelf space. Sure. Uh, but it's a, it gives you a different, completely different flavor profile from that 7x60 when you drop it down to a Toro. Uh, and then we have a brand new cigar that uh, is coming out. It's supposed to drop uh, pretty soon. I can't let the cat out of the bag yet. Of course not. You're going to call, you're gonna call the, 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 the print company and tell mm-hmm. them. And then they're going to wait 30 days for the customers to get it. I get it. It's good. Uh, you, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I get it. I get it. Go ahead, move on. <laughs> but we've got a brand new cigar. It's dropping now. Uh, and I, I'll give you a little bit of what it's going to be is our fullest body cigar yet. It's actually a uh, Brazilian Matafina. Mm. And it's called the Grand Architect. Uh, it should be available in stores within the next four to six weeks yep so it's all stores you're not doing any exclusive ones first or are you or it's going to be by event no, only no, we're, and stuff we're, like that. we're making it available to all of our retailers mm-hmm. uh, we're, we're small enough now um, that we we want to give as much support to our retailers as possible so when we release something new mm-hmm. everybody gets it yeah so it's, yeah yeah that's it's good exciting. i i think that that's a good methodology whether you're boutique or not like i get the taa thing and i get the exclusivity and all that stuff and I, and what i don't get is that when you're a a, a a cigar company and you have to have certain levels to have certain things to come out and incentivize like seriously like like you know it, but then again you know i get hate meal all the time Hate email all the time at Joe H at Stogie, uh, Stogie You can flash me an email. You know, it's like, oh, well, I like this cigar. Well, it's only available for shops that do a, a certain percentage and stuff like that. Okay, so let me get this straight, Mr. Rep, okay? You're sitting in this cigar shop here doing an event. Everybody's here to see you in your sticks. And you're telling us that I can't get this stick because this shop that you're here doing an event and we're here to see you, right? Either that or some people show up like little sisters of the poor and want the food, right? Either way, right? So, um, so, so then they come up there and then they, and then they do that. And then you, you're publicly saying in front of the owner, like, yeah, uh, you got, you know, hey, by the way, I'm doing an event down the street. I'm doing an event down the street. If you want to show up to that event too, and uh, dude, like seriously, like, like seriously, like, you know what I mean? And it, it, it drives me nuts. That's why when I walk into the cigar shop, people are like, oh shit, that's it, it's him. You know what I mean? But that's just the way it goes. And the problem is, like, people in the industry, any podcast, pick one. They're, they're, Nobody lets the cat out of the bag and says it, right? No one says that's crazy. I think it's great for you guys to say, hey, listen, this is a new stick. We're going to get it out here. And by the way, it's got Brazilian Maltafina in it, which means it's awesome, okay? It's going to be a flavor bomb for sure. Haven't even had it, but if you understand, if you follow the bouncing ball, that should be good. I don't know how long it's been waiting or how long that, that's been in the mix. If you want to reveal that, that's fine. Um, you know, like like when they when they came up with that test blend, and then they said, "Okay, Hiram Assam is going to launch this in in March of 2019." I'm making the date up, but 2019, right? Like like how long has that waited? Are you guys so you've had the test blends? Is it a flavor bomb? Yeah, more more or less, it it takes about about a year um, from original concept to actual release. Mm-hmm. So 
uh, because you, you need time to to make sure you have the correct uh, tobaccos you need time to uh, try different blends you might have an idea but you don't initially like that particular blend uh, so you need to go ahead and try different things and and see what works see what doesn't work on your palate and the palate of others uh, and then of course once you actually decide on a blend you need time for those cigars to sit sure uh, we're fortunate enough to work with the Placencia factory down in Esteli in Nicaragua. Um, they are fantastic. They have access to some of the best tobaccos in the world. Yes, they do. Um, and we're, we're fortunate enough to be able to take advantage of that. Uh, so it, it's, it's exciting to, to be able to go down there, um, try new things, maybe work with some different tobaccos, uh, for instance, a uh, tobacco from Paraguay or a tobacco um, uh, that may not necessarily be available to other folks, it is available at Placencia. So mm-hmm. uh, it makes it a lot more uh, fun and interesting yeah. along the way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I think that the, the Placencia factory itself has done a great job at brand differentiation so in other words that if Hiram and Solomon this is their showcase right and then you have other brands that has come by and other brands so they've 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 done a great job there and they've done a good job of exclusivity of the available tobaccos to each person and and stuff like that and 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 I think from the consumer perspective uh you know when, when you're talking Brazilian Maltafina with this new uh, stick, uh, I, th- I, th- I think it's going to be a uh, very exciting release for you, and I, th- I think it's going to be a flavor bomb for sure. Want to get back to the one about the Lancero and the Araparaca wrapper, right? So, yeah. so with that being said, was that the one? The, so, correct me if I'm wrong, or if 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 I heard this wrong, the original cigar that was in the coffin is now going to be. It was. Over 2018, to my knowledge, uh, made available in the Toro, and then now you're taking that same blend and making that in the Lancero. Is that the same? No. So, no. Okay. Yeah. No. So what we're what we're doing is we took the one that was available in the coffin. Yep. With the Brazilian Arapiaca, uh, which was previously, which is still still is, but it's a seven by sixty in a coffin. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the show, we we created a new Vitola for that, or used a new Vitola for that, um, and and did it as Toro. Um, the Lancero that we're releasing is actually in the traveling man. It's a different line. Not, not now. The one in the coffin for those of you scarring at home, that was the Veiled Prophet, correct? Veiled Prophet, yep. correct. Okay, so so it's about people like saying, "Oh, Hiram Solomon coffin." The Veiled Prophet, which is a specific cigar that we're talking about from Hiram Solomon, originally came out in a coffin, had a twenty change price point, blah blah blah. Did its thing. Okay, great. Now you have that available in the Toro. We have it available in a Toro. Yep. Uh, at a lower at, price point. At a so lower price the, point, yep. yes. So, so yeah. please, so please for instance, note. most of our price points uh, for that, for the Toro, uh, is anywhere between uh, $9 and about nine fifty. dollars Yep. Uh, previously, it was anywhere between 13 and $14 in the coffin. So, right. Uh, and made, the reason made, why... And the reason why I'm bringing that out is for the Story Geeks listener who listens to this on audio, which there are still a lot of them out there, as opposed to video, is that they may have had the Veiled Prophet in the coffin, and then be, and then and then I wanted them to follow the bouncing ball. If if they liked it or didn't like it for whatever reason, they can retry it because it's a different blend. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. If if it was with this too, and I want to make this so that it's great for the Stogie Geeks listener. The Veil Prophet Coffin was in your original, original factory, and then the Toro was now when you guys changed factories and moved forward from your 2017 on, correct? So you're, you're not wrong. Uh, I'm just half right, right? It's, that's the story of my right. life. Yeah. That's a- <laughs> so our, our original Veil Prophet, uh, when we launched it, we're actually celebrating our four-year anniversary. Um, but when we launched originally, we, we did the Veil Profit as a limited run. We only made uh, 500 boxes, and those were made at our original factory in the Dominican Republic. Correct. Uh, when we switched production to the Placencia factory in Nicaragua, we uh, then released it from the Nicaraguan factory as well, mm-hmm. but as a regular production. So it's a instead of being... Dominican now it's Nicaraguan. Gotcha. Same wrap. Yep. Uh, just different uh, 
a slightly different binder and filler. Yep. Uh, but you're so you're sort of you're sort of right. The, the original release uh, from back in in 2015 uh, came in a coffin. It was called the Veil Prophet. Um, it had a, a great mixture of tobaccos that were eight years old. It was a special limited run that we did um, at that time. Uh, you, you still might be able to find a unicorn out there. Uh, that, that There might still be one or two available. Mm-hmm. I don't have any more. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wish I did. I've actually had the opportunity to have both. I've had some Sto- Stogie Geeks listeners send me some. Um, yep. w- w- when I was just getting introduced to the brand and mm-hmm. introduced to that, mm-hmm. I've actually had some. and then And then I've actually had... Uh, the Toro version as well. Uh, it's great. It, it's a good cigar. I, I rated it on on Sto- uh, StogieGeeks.com. You can go there, type it into the search, and then find it there um, for sure. All right. Now, talk to me about this Lancero then. Getting back to my original question. Uh, you're, you're launching the, the, the this Lancero, and I think that that's a, a, a really super cool move. Uh, I don't think that enough Stogie Geeks listeners... Or enough consumers really give Lanceros a chance, but now's your time to sell that Lancero. Yeah, so I, I believe that that the Lancero uh, really gives you the the best flavor profile of, of any size, uh, because typically when when we're blending in a factory, when when master blenders are blending, uh, they'll use a Lancero. But it, what the Lancero does is it gives you uh, an opportunity to really taste how that wrapper impacts the cigar. Mm-hmm. See, the bigger the bigger the ring gauge is, the, the more the wrapper flavor is diminished by the binder and the filler. That only makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, what, so what you get is a much more concentrated flavor in that Lancero. So, for instance, uh, if you have a chance to, to smoke a Lancero um, right next to a Toro, you're going to taste... Uh, the wrapper and that the effect that that wrapper has on that blend a lot more on the Lancero than you are on the, on the tour. Mm-hmm. So it gives you a, just a completely different experience uh, than you would normally get um, with a larger ring gauge. It's, it's more concentrated. It's more uh, focused and you're going to get a, a different, slightly different flavor profile. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's coming out in a couple of months. That's actually available as of right now. Oh, cool. So you're going to see it popping up in stores uh, across the country as of right now. What's it called? It's called the Traveling Man Lancero. Oh, okay. Good answer. All right. I like yeah. it. Cool. It's the Traveling Man Lancero. You probably yeah, already it, said it, that. It's an Indonesian Sumatra. Yeah. Awesome. That's uh-huh. awesome. I, I, I think that, that that's it's definitely the way to go. You know what I mean? For, for the Lanceros. Now, let's talk business of Lanceros, okay? Because... I, I don't know what it is, right? It's it's like it's like hold on. It's like what happens is you know you you it, it's you're exactly right when it comes to Lanceros, right? Flavor is is there. What I like about Lanceros is not only the flavor is when you smoke a Lancero, you're kind of not portable. And what I mean by portable is you wouldn't go golfing, fishing, hang out, type on a computer, whatever, whatever it is your gig that you do with cigar. You might walk your dog, right? Because you can kind of walk your dog. Unless you had a big dog, right? But anyway, yeah. we're, not, we're not going to get into dogs, right? But so what happens is, so what happens there is that like, it allows you to really, really slow down and enjoy a cigar. And what what drives me crazy is when I walk into any cigar shop across the country, Lanceros are sitting there, and it's like it's, you know, culture. This is what's it. This is where it's at. This is where this is where you want to find where it's at. But anyway, to me, you know. to me it's insane, and you're 100 percent right. To, to me, it's it's insane the the perception um, that. You know, a lot of even even cigar shops, tobacconists have about a Lancero. Uh, they they don't they don't feel like pushing it, or they don't try and and uh, recommend it to the customer because they don't feel like it's as good of a value. Right. I don't know 
what the real reason is. Um, but I'll see Lanceros that are fantastic sitting on the shelf, and it drives me crazy because I'll grab them up. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, come on, let's do it. You I, know what I mean? Also, uh, it's part of it is kind of the, the culture that we're in, right? Since since people started releasing the um, – really, the advent of it was the, the 6 by 60 and then it got bigger to, you know, 7x7s, 8x80s. Uh, and even crazier from there, uh, the kind of the bigger the cigar, the better your value, the better the smoke, the more smoke you're getting. Yep. Um, and and that's kind of, in a sense, that's taken a lot of the uh, focus away from these older Vitolas, where originally your biggest ring gauge was going to be like a. Uh, Maybe a 50. 50, 56. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, 52. Yeah. Uh, during the cigar boom and even, you know, way before that, these these cigars weren't that size. They were the Lanceros. They were the, the uh, Petit Coronas. They were uh, the Lonsdales. And yeah. that's how the traditional blenders blended, right? Mm -hmm. Going back 100, 100 plus years. Right. Um, and now you have these the six by sixties and the seven seventies or whatever um, that it, you have to modify the way you blend the cigar, and and it's it's a totally different uh, mentality now. So it's kind of changed the way we think about things as an industry, as from the consumer side. Yeah, and it's crazy. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is crazy. And, and, so and awesome. yeah, yeah, Paul yeah. always says like you know, pit, well, went to a cigar awesome. shop, picked these lanceros up. It's crazy. Uh, this is why Sto Story Geeks listeners develop a relationship with your local shop. Go in there. You find some Lanceros. Talk to him or her about that and just say, hey, you know, is there any way you can give me a slightly discount on this? I, I really want to try to get into some Lanceros. They, they should work with you, right, for sure. And, and, and you owe it to yourself because the flavor it's just, it's just so different. It's like night and day, right? It's like, you know, I have in my little uh, – pa uh, um, what is this thing? Uh, cigar case that I bought, right? I carry one of these with me all the time, right? It's to tap black Lancero, right? It's freaking awesome, right? Now, if you have the Robusto, it's good, right? You have the Toro, it, it's good. But, but this freaking cigar, I love it, right? I got I got some more Lanceros in there. I love the Lanceros. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's just a, w a definite way to go. I'm looking forward to trying the Traveling Man Lancero for sure. I think it's going to be... A really good hit for you, and I also think that because of your market position, as far as like with the Hyman and Solomon and Masons, and how that's all tied in with with the different names and whatnot, I think that because it's positioned correctly, I think you're going to see a little bit more success than some of your competitors when it comes to some of the Lanceros, if the tobacco is ready, you know, and all that stuff, but. If you're talking a level playing field, I really think that that should be a very good cigar for you here in 2019. I, I think we're going to do well with it. I really do. I, I, uh, we've had requests for it for, for years. And finally, you know, we, were, we had the opportunity to come out with that, that particular Mitola. And we're really excited about it. How's the packaging in that? Is it going to be, is it just going to be in a simple box, 20 count, 10 count? Yeah, the same. It's going to be the same style. Um, it's going to be in a, the Lancero is going to be in a 30 count box, I okay. believe. Okay, sure. Um, yeah. Just, just because of the size. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be in a 30 count box, but that's the, the only difference in the packaging. Uh, it'll have the same purple label with the square and compass. Yep. Um, one, th one thing I'd like to mention uh, about our company from the business side is it's kind of exciting. Uh, when we started out, it was mostly Mason smoking our cigar and mostly uh, guys in the lodge and, and kind of boutique nuts um, that love boutique cigars or things that are, that are smaller. Um, but now what we're seeing through, through Instagram and Facebook, uh, I think we have over 9,000 followers on, on Instagram now. Um, we're seeing more and more people smoking our cigar that are not brothers, are not in, affiliated with the fraternity in any way. Sure. So he's, um, you know, and, and it's amazing to see how the cigar has kind of gotten into the hands of folks that that may not have noticed it before. Um, it really is everybody's cigar, yeah. and, and we're really proud of that. And I'm, I'm seeing it more and more through social media and through uh, various avenues 
that people are trying the cigar, giving a try for the first time, and then going back to it. Mm-hmm. And, and we appreciate that. It's 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 exciting for us to know uh, that it's not just something that. Uh, it's not just a niche or not just some type of fluke. We have a great product and people are enjoying it outside of, of the fraternity as well. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Are you releasing anything new around IPCPR or are you just going to ride out the, the year and when it comes, it comes? Or is there is there like a big announcement for you guys around that time? Uh, yeah, we're, we're working on some things. Uh, so, so we should have something in time for the IPCPR. Uh, we're working on a couple of things now. Um, and we should have more information about it as we get closer to the show. Awesome. If you want to send it to me, you can. Of course, my brother. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I love it when, when vendors send it to me. Hey. This is new, but don't talk about it until you see it in the print publication. And I Definitely. say, hey, okay, and I do that. I do do that. I do. You know, I'll send you a few, and I'll come up there and I'll come up there and smoke it with you. How about send that? me some samples with no freaking label on it, and then say, oh, by the way, that's what you smoked a couple months ago when I sent you. Here you go. That, that, that's what it was. And uh, see, no, out of everybody we interview every week, no one's smart enough to peel off the labels, send it to me or me and Paul or whatever with no label, and say, hey, what do you think? Not one of them thought about that. Like I would do that if I if I owned a cigar company, I would be like, yeah. Man, I'm gonna, there you go. I'm gonna do that. Actually, one gentleman did that. One gentleman did that. Actually, um, it was um, uh, Spencer Drake, right? He sent he sent us. He was from uh, Jr. Right um, there in white. Oh boy. Uh, anyway, Spencer Drake. You can Google him. Whatever. He was on the show, right? And he sent me a cigar with no labels on it. Bunch of them, right? And I was like. Uh, you know, when we did the kind of like pre-test call and check in, I'm like, dude, whatever you sent me was awesome. Where can I get it? How can I get it? And now this was this was November 27th of 2017 uh, when he sent it. Right? He did his interview. Oh, I'm sorry. He did his interview on November 27th of 2017. That was his interview. So for Story Geeks listeners, November 27th. There you go. Ask me why that date sticks in my head. Um, I have a degree in economics. That's how I think. It's very date. Anyway, moving on, right? Um, he sent it to me early November. So by the time I got to this interview, I'm like, dude, whatever you sent me was awesome, blah, blah, blah. I was like, where can I get him? How can I get more? He goes, wait till IPCPR because that's what's coming out. And then he said, I'm not telling you what they are, but you had a chance. And I'm like, oh, really? Like, I was like, I would have, you know what I mean? So, uh, like, he's the only one who, who kind of, like, I don't say he duped me, but he kind of, like, really, really play, played it up. You know what I mean? Well, we, we love to get feedback. You know, that that's the only way that, that's the only way you can succeed as a company yeah. is if, if you take feedback and you you act on uh, If If I'm releasing a cigar... Uh, as a manufacturer, and I give it to five, six people, and they all tell me, "Hey, Wayne, this is a this is a dog rocket." Uh, I'm probably not going to take it to market, right? Sure. Um, but, but how are we going to know? Because it, it may be, I may think it's the, the uh, best cigar on the planet, but if five other people don't like it, there's a really good chance that it's not them that's messed up; it's me. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, well, I'm going to ask you the same question. That I that I tell everyone who 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 reviews, and no one's taking me up on my offer, right? I'll sign a non disclosure, so we will be all set with Story Geeks. We have nice a non disclosure. If you need a testing panel, I'll give you my mailing address, and I'm gonna tell you what the hell I think about the cigar. Like I'm gonna brutally, I'm gonna say, hey man, cigar's great, but you know something? It's not portable. Or who's your target audience? Or, or however, you know what I mean? So if you want to be the first one to join there for that. You let me know. If not, then you can go on the list of everyone else who doesn't take me up on that offer. We can we can make that happen. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what they all say, and then it goes ghost, right? Anyway, right? yeah, it'll be it'll be uh, January 2020. Hey, we have Wayne Clark over here, and it, 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 that's that's exactly how it goes. I, I'm hey. just telling you. Okay. If you well, want to break the pattern, best. if you want to break the pattern, you can be the first. You have anything else you want to talk about about the company coming up, uh, and any any concepts coming up, or any any super cool yeah, stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's a, a really exciting time uh, for our company in terms of growth and where we're headed. Um, we're kind of right on that cusp of 
you know, breaking through to the point where we're, we're recognizable in just about any humidor. Uh, several TAA retailers came on board this year. Uh, we had, we're, we're having online presence through a lot of our retailers. Uh, the reviews are coming out. Um, we're in the top five for, for a couple of magazines this year. Yep. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of right, we're right there. Um, and, and it's exciting. We're, we're right on the cusp of, of, um, you know, that next level. We're in about 280 stores nationwide. Um, and it's growing every day. Thanks to an amazing team of brand ambassadors that, uh, I have working with us, um, you know, our team of brand ambassadors is fantastic, and they've been working tirelessly to get the cigar out to different stores. Um, the only thing I can say is if you haven't tried our cigar yet, uh, go into your local tobacconist and, and ask uh, for the product. And that's the only way that small companies like ours uh, can get into the humidor. The cigars don't just magically appear out of nowhere. Um, you know, they... they they end up in that humidor because somebody goes in and requests the product. And every time you guys do that, it, it means a lot to us. Um, it helps a small family owned business in the, in the cigar manufacturing industry. And, uh, you know, we can't do it without you guys going in there um, and requesting the cigar. So hats off to the Stogie Geeks folks. Um, yeah. You guys are, have been fantastic with us, um, the listeners, the viewers. Uh, you guys have helped us grow a lot in this past year, so thank you guys very much for that. Oh no, you're welcome. I mean, you know, it's like it's like what I really. There are probably if 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 it if my duties were beyond hosting the show, and I would take a couple of of companies out there and position them. Who say okay? These are my top five or ten. Or I'll pick a number; it doesn't matter. You, you guys are in the mix of companies to watch, and they're in the mix for a bunch of different reasons. And to elaborate on those reasons, it reminds me of Tom for Line of Duty Cigars as well, right? You know, you have Line of Duty Cigars. You talk about the brotherhood of your police, fire, rescue. The, the everything that happens there, uh, I'm very familiar with the Brotherhood. Have, you know, being a Navy brat and have my father being in the Navy, I know what it's like. We have friends for life, um, whether they're extended family and whatnot, and a very closeness. And and when I when I look at both of your companies and you look at a target audience as opposed to Company X, I'm not going to compare you to any other boutique company or anything else like that. That, I'm going to save that for my last episode. My last episode is going to be five hours um, there. So I really hope that Story Geeks management and or its staff gives me my notice. Because it's going to be a hell of a show, right? I mean, it's going to be a hell of a show, right? But I really think that, you know, it, it, one of those things where you guys have a you have to have a target audience. You have to have a good product. You have to have a uh, means to continue after your whatever your tier is that you got to get with the factory to make sure that the product stays consistent, make sure the product stays consistently good, make sure the tobacco is consistently ready, all those m into the mix. And then you get into the target audience for that. And I really think that you, it's, it's kind of like a springboard for you guys where, you know, you got a great story to tell, you got a good product, you, some of the products vary as far as good to great, in my opinion. I'm just a consumer, right? You know, and and then you, I have a couple that are my favorites, and I have a couple of sticks within your sphere that are in my regular rotation. So I'm like, okay, I want to pay attention to this company, and it's great to see it grow, and it's great to see more and more people get into it. You know what I mean? Um, how has the road? been a factor in your growth and i mean that like from an you know kind of from like a ten thousand foot view as opposed to a three thousand foot 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 view because what happens often with any cigar company it doesn't matter if you're a classic facing doesn't matter if you're new to the cigar industry doesn't matter if you want to put yourself on that boutique shelf how has the road been a critical component and when i, when I talk about social media now the road and the rep been a critical component to the growth of companies because I've seen this happen all the time. I mean, I could, like I said, if this was my last episode, I'd burn through a list of 30 companies who 
super awesome. People like the rap, don't like the rap, blah blah blah. But the but the brand itself does successful with that. How what are you, what are your kind of challenges business wise to say okay, Hiram Solomon here is poised for growth. We have new products coming out. We have a big announcement, IBCPR, although we won't say it on Stogie Geeks first, right? Uh, however, um, you know, how has the road been a big factor? And what are you going to do to kind of combat that as a company? Because I really truly think that just posting sticks on social media and whatnot, it's great. It's great to get, it's great to get the viewers, but it's really not, it, it becomes a really, really big challenge to expand a company when you're talking about, hey, let's all be honest. Nobody mentions this when it comes to a cigar podcast. It's moving sticks. You move sticks to the retailer, retailer moves sticks. It's that simple. It's all about moving sticks. Nobody talks about it, right? What are you guys going to do to kind of build that momentum? So I think I think anytime you've you've got a small business, right, it really revolves around your team. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have a good core group of people on your team, you're not going to grow. You're not going to see uh, an upward trend. You're just kind of going to stay stagnant. Sure. So one of the things that we've done over the past year is um, not just willy-nilly add brand ambassadors or brokers or people to the team. We wanted to make sure we were adding the right people and people that are going to make an impact out there in the field. Uh, so we've added some great people in the past uh, you know, year or so. And I think w with a cigar like ours, you know, it, we're a small company, we're a small brand. Uh, the only way that you're going to make an impact in the store is through your brand ambassador. For sure. And through, through the guy that's on the road. And I think a lot of companies lose sight of this. You know, they pay uh, the big dollars for the advertising and all the big magazines and blogs and all this stuff, right? But if you don't have good brand ambassadors on the ground uh, that are showing this cigar directly to the consumer, you're not going to grow. Uh, and that's that's where the road comes in. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work in about 35 states this year. Uh, I've traveled all over the country, did about 180 hotel nights since I came on board um, with Hiram and Solomon. And uh, it's been a, a road warrior kind of year. And if you look at uh, uh, the amount that, that I traveled to be out there with, with my brand ambassadors, um, it would make your head spin. And the reason we do that is because we need to connect directly with the consumer. Sure. Uh, any, anybody can call and make make calls to the uh, to the retailer, right? It doesn't. It, anybody can do that. Um, but what you really have to focus on as a brand, especially a small brand like ours, is building relationships with the guys that are in that cigar shop. Yep. Um, not just the owner or the manager of that particular cigar shop. So that takes time, and that's where the road comes in, and that's where having excellent brand ambassadors comes in. And we, we've got a great team uh, of guys. I mean, I, I, my my rep um, down in Texas, Robert Matthews, and this is a guy that had zero experience in the business when he came on board with us two years ago, and he has built it to make Texas one of our strongest markets because he's in the lounges and he's there constantly and he's he's showing up and he's building relationships with the people that are actually purchasing the cigars and we can't forget that as manufacturers that those are the folks that that really make um the impact and they're the ones that really make the difference uh toward growth of a business that's a great point that's a, a phenomenal point and i think like i said um, I wish you much success for for 2019 uh, with that. Thank you, brother. For sure, I think you guys, I think you guys are really poised for growth. I, th I think you, you you got some good, really good products in there, um, and I know that one of the things that is, is important is which we didn't really talk about, and we don't really need to. We can just kind of put it on a shelf and let it linger for the Story Geeks listener. Is you got brand loyalty. So, 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 you know, and, and, and believe me, I've, I talk to people and all the time here or offline or whichever, and they're like, oh, well, you know, you know, you know, we, we've been around for a hundred and you always hear, and you always hear that and you say, yeah, well, you know, well, let's talk about brand loyalty. Like, let's talk about what's in your rotation. 
Like, uh, you know, I always ask someone in a cigar shop, hey, well, what's in your rotation? Not, you know, do you like Dominican, Nicaraguan, uh, medium, mild, strong? You know, what do you like? You know what I mean? Do you like unicorn piss? Do you like freaking this? Do you like that? Like, no, no, no. Like, seriously, like, like, do, what, what is in your rotation? And that will tell you to the character of the brand loyalty, right? Because the rotation is in the brand loyalty, you know? And, and, and one of the things that I notice is that in the shops where you have a presence, there is brand loyalty, you know? Yeah, and, and we we definitely appreciate um, you know, everybody who's giving our cigar a chance. It's really everyone's cigar. Um, it's not just a cigar for brothers or people within masonry. It's everyone's cigar. Everybody can try it, smoke it, and enjoy it. And I found on the road um, that the people that actually do give us a shot – come back sure uh, sure and uh, you build brand loyalty really through long-term relationships uh and and that's one of our focuses for the coming year uh so, to touch as many people as possible uh on a one-to-one -one basis and really kind of show them what we're all about as a small business and a company because a lot of people forget that each of these boutique companies out here are family-owned uh companies are really small businesses, um, and, and a lot of us aren't. I mean, we're we're on a larger scale, but some of us aren't really any larger than your average cigar shop. Uh, you know, it, it, there's some people out there that are just beginning or whatever. We're in a great position, but I'm saying that some of the companies, the boutiques out there, um, they're just a, a tiny business that's trying to survive. And when you, as a consumer, give them a shot. Uh, and it makes all the difference in the world. Um, it makes sure that somebody's kid can go to uh, basketball practice later on. Make sure that uh, you know you have gas in the car. Things like that. That makes a difference uh, to the small manufacturers, and that's really what sets us aside. Gotcha. I'm putting you on the spot. Of your line, what's your favorite uh, line? I'll give you mine. So we'll go okay. to the So what is your favorite one? I guess I could say so far because I'm not privy to the new stuff, right? And 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 if it's going to be the new stuff, you could say the new stuff, and then yeah. there you go. But but what's your favorite one? I think the one the one that I smoke the most regularly uh, is the Fellow Craft. That's what I'm smoking right now. Yep. Uh, that's my personal favorite. Yep. Um, but every day I have my my Dunkin' Donuts coffee because I'm a true hardcore New Englander. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I have my Dunkin' Donuts coffee, and I smoke my Entered Apprentice in the morning, beautiful Connecticut. Um, and, and throughout the day, I'll smoke a, a fellow craft, awesome, medium, nice spice. Yep. For me, it's, it's right exactly what I like uh, in terms of flavor profile. Yeah, yeah. Flavor profile, I was a, a fellow craft by sure. My favorite, number one in your line. However, with me, has to be Bullet Book uh, Punch Cup. Has to be punch cut. Love the tar build up. Comes through. I don't know if you if you're a guillotine or V or 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 or, or, or a bullet. I do a bullet fellow craft with some um, uh, a bloody mary. Awesome in the morning and in, in in the morning. All right. I need a bloody mary now. Anyway, but uh, uh, a a uh, a fellow craft there. I really like that. I started. I was on a uh, traveling man kick for a little bit. Yep. But then I found myself going right back to the fellow craft, which, which to, to me, when I get into a line, whatever line it is, you know, whatever, uh, it's like the one I go back to and go back to and go back to. And this is a, a course over the course of time. I'm like, that's the one that really sticks out. Absolutely. And that my I generally go back to the fellow craft because uh, for me, I like that spice. I like the, the body of it. Yeah, uh, it's not. It's not a super strong cigar, but I find it to, to be great in body and, and flavor. It's tasty. Uh, just, it's it's right so in, tasty. Right yeah. In my wheelhouse. Yep. And Absolutely. the traveling man too. I mean, I, I smoke a fair amount of traveling man. Uh, you know, just uh, I, that's a great everyday cigar with that that uh, Indonesian Sumatra. Yeah. Uh, just a fantastic everyday. So I love Sumatra wrappers personally. Um, and and I, I, that's a great great steak for everyday smoking. Yeah. You like Bloody Marys? Oh heck yeah! Bloody uh, Mary and your fellow craft is where you gotta go, man. That's the shit right there. <laughs> it, it's fun. I was I was down in Florida, and I'm not gonna mention where I was, but um, they have a fantastic Bloody Mary. I was with Fuad 
um, one of the owners of the company. And we sat down and that was the first time that he uh, he and I had spent Smoked a fellow craft with a with a Bloody Mary. Um, it's banging. It's like you're 100% I know, I know, I know, I know. If it comes to do my second to the last show of Story <laughs> Geeks, whenever that is, is going to be what the hell to pair with a Bloody Mary? Because people are like, are you serious? I mean, dude, I've had I've had freaking cigars with Bloody Marys all the time. I freaking love it. Like I don't drink Bloody Marys like every day. You know I love I mean? a but, good Bloody Mary. I know, right? So yes. what? What? Why can't you mention where you were? Where, where you, what was it? Was it? Was it a competitor? You can say yes. No, no. Oh, I, I just I, 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 it was a rule <laughs> mentioning. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I just you know I mean you know I can't say but yeah I was on this other show. Which they're are, they're oh. well known for their bloody marriage. That's cool. But gotcha. There's a picture of it on our Instagram page. You'll you'll pull it up at some point. It's the most. Compl- it's like a meal, a meal with a bloody mary. I'm in. That sounds good. That sounds Body good. Awesome. West Palm Beach. Awesome. Well, like I said, I wish you success with your company. Want to pivot a little bit more and talk and kind of change the subject a little bit. Yeah. Um, be- before we get into Senate Bill S nine, because that's going to be pretty quick. Um, what I'm ho- what I'm happy about is between last week's Stogie Geeks episode and this week's Stogie Geeks episode, we now have a definition of what a premium cigar is. Like I don't know if you knew what this was, but now with the, with our government, we have, and I don't I don't like to turn this into a government show at all, right? But it's like we now have a definition. So, Stoic Geeks, listen, is you don't want to tune out quite yet. You want to hang on because at the end of this episode, we are going to define what a premium cigar is, right? Uh, and and I just I don't know. I get giddy when they use the word tip. But anyway, right? Moving on. <laughs> right, PG thirteen. Sorry, I know. There, yeah, right. So, so now, uh, here we go. My next uh, pivoting moment. So we only have two more. The next one is: What do you look forward to industry wise, non Hiram and Solomon, for twenty nineteen? Like, what do you kind of look forward to being in the industry as you were? You've been in for what? Well over five years now. Correct? Is my math right? Yes. Uh, I think one of the things I, I look forward to most is seeing the market share of boutiques grow. Um, and it's it's been a trend over the past couple of years, but it's really starting to take off now uh, with, with some of your boutique companies out there. Uh, and I love seeing that. Yep. I love I love seeing the trend of, of your everyday cigar smoker trying something new instead of going to the same stalwart brands they've been smoking for 20 or 30 years. Yep. Uh, it's really exciting, especially as a, as a boutique cigar maker. Um, so I think that that's, we're seeing a lot of progress um, with some of the boutique cigar makers out there um, in terms of gaining respectability in the market and, and all of that. So it's, that's really exciting, that piece of it. Um, and I also really look forward to uh, this year seeing what's going to happen with the FDA. Um, and, and I know we're going to talk about that a little bit later, but um, seeing how the bill progresses now that we do have a definition. Yeah. Uh, a premium cigar yeah. um, and, and seeing what's going to happen in 2019 with that, because we've kind of been waiting uh, for this administration to take a look at our industry a little bit more closely. And as of yet, they haven't really um, done a whole lot. And I was hoping that Dr. Gottlieb uh, would, would look at it a little bit sooner, but it appears now that, we're moving kind of in a better direction than we were before. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think those are two great points. Uh, to elaborate on your first point uh, in regards to the boutiques being positioned to get a lot more, I would even like to expand or add a subcategory, which I think is the category, which I think that a lot of uh, either of the podcast or a lot of cigar journalists or whatever your role is, cigar rep, what a cigar owner, more specifically – is that it's coming from a region, and it's the region of Nicaragua. And Nicaraguan cigars are certainly, the consumers have reached out and said, we want more, we want more blends, we think that Company X is fascinating, we let all these companies, A, B, C, D, whatever, right? And in and, and, and that region is, if you were to look at it from a pie chart perspective, the region of Nicaragua is taking more and more market share away 
from the others. And hats off. I really hope that their administration and their economies can stay stable enough to obviously continue to be nonviolent and to continue to, 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 to work on whatever issues they have to for the workers and for the workers that feel safe in the environment that they're working in, um, you know, uh, there. But that whole region has really, really been a big factor because if we take out Nicaraguan cigars, my opinion, and put them in any other region, right, and it's no testament to other regions. Everyone has their place. But when you're talking about true business market share and Nicaraguan gathering more and more each year, if you take out those regions, I don't think that the boutique movement or the small cigar movement would be as popular if the consumer's palates, palates, there you go, palates, didn't demand it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think, um, yeah, I, I love looking at, at statistics for this industry. Uh, and at the end of the year, I, I always kind of take a look at, you know, where the leading exporters were or whatever. Um, but one of the things that I noticed, and, and I, it was a really crazy statistic, um, is that imports this year were up 21% yep. from 2017, yep. which if you look at it, that's fantastic. We're in the tobacco business, right? And we have all of these outside forces trying to pull us down all the time. Um, but we were man- we managed in the premium cigar business to be up 21% as a whole in terms of imports. Yeah. Um, and that, to me, just blows my mind. Uh, the Dominican Republic alone, uh, I believe, was up over 20%. Um, you know, Nicaragua is not slowing down at all. Right. Uh, and Honduras actually killing it. Yes. Um, so it, it's amazing to me uh, just how we've managed to grow as an industry in spite of all the crap that's around us trying to drag us down. Um, you're right. Nicaragua, uh, you know, Nicaragua is doing some great things. Yeah. Um, it's one of the only places in the world where you have – four very unique and independent growing regions within a very small country. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you, that's why Nicaraguan cigars tend to, to have that much complexity. Uh, it's because you have, you know, you can take Lijero from Amnatepe and you can take Lijero from Jalapa and they're going to taste completely different. Sure. Um, so that's what makes Nicaragua really, really special. Um, and that's why with those with discerning palates or those that are getting into boutiques a little bit more uh, are finding the Nicaraguans kind of tend to hit what they're looking for in terms of complexity. Um, not taking anything away from the Dominican Republic because anybody who knows me knows that my heart is uh, most definitely in the Dominican Republic as well. Um, but, you know, they, they don't have uh, the different growing regions as much. Um they're closer to like a Cuba, mm-hmm. um, but Nicaragua has the volcanoes. They have, uh, you know, the different different regions, and it, that's what makes it really special. I think it boils um, down to two things, right? To wrap it up, the, the, the this topic, I think it boils down to to to, to two things. It's a rocky soil, right? You have rocky soil. You have volcanic soil. It's rocky. It's a different temperature. It's a different growing process. And number two, it's creativity. It's the creativity from. The Nicaraguan region and 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 the other rappers that they include and all of that stuff and I think that that is a good pivot point for them for the business for sure. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You had you have all these guys that are, uh, you know, I guess you would call them gringos like me. Uh, they go to Nicaragua and learn from the best, right? Yeah. And they're willing to try new things and willing to experiment. And then all of a sudden uh, they come out with a fantastic cigar uh, that just blows your mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas the art, it's kind of more traditional. Yeah, so traditional. And, and, and each one has their place for sure. Okay. You ready for this? Now, our last topic, we got a couple more minutes and then we're going to bounce here. Uh, here. So, so Senator Marco Robio produced a bill here, is endorsing a bill. It's called Senate S9. For those of you who want to follow it along, it is they added an addendum to the traditional cigar manufacturing and small business jobs preservation act of 2019. It seeks to protect cigars that meet the following guidelines. You ready for these guidelines? Very important, right? There's four of them. First of all, 
this is to protect from the FDA and have premium tobacco, premium cigars be exempt from the FDA's legis pending consideration of their legislation. You ready? The cigar must be wrapped in 100% leaf tobacco and bundled with 100% tobacco filler. Okay. Check. Right? <laughs> Check mark. We got three more to get through. Okay. If the tobacco must contain, I'm sorry, let me, let me correct that. Correction. The tobacco cannot contain a filler tip or non tobacco mouthpiece. Check. <laughs> right? Here we go. Two more, right? It must weigh at least six pounds per thousand count. That's interesting. Right, that's interesting because I'm not into Department of Weights and Measures and whatnot, but I'm assuming that they're trying to limit size. Now, if I wanted to get a little bit more stogie geek, I wonder what, and I'm making it up, I'm not picking on ring gauges, I wonder what, so I'll lump 56, 60, 70, and 80 way in a thousand count. I wonder. And this will come back. This will come if... If, and I'm saying if, I'm going to do some research, I might check in on Next Story Geek Show to kind of follow up on that. I'm going to do some research as to what a uh, 80, uh, uh, 70 ring gauge, 1,000 count box is. Because if it weighs at least, uh, if, it w if it weighs under uh, uh, six pounds, then we're good. But I wonder why they came up with that. Just from reading the notes right quick, I wonder. So we're going to go check with a question mark on that because I think that they might limit the actual ring gauge size. I think, well, I don't know if they're trying to limit the ring gauge size as much as they're trying to limit uh, machine-made products being defined as uh, premium cigars. I think that's good point. That's where a good point. There you go. Good point. Yep. Yeah. You're a little bit more involved in that process. That's a good point. So I'm going to do some work on that. And then the last one is the cigar has to have 100% tobacco binder because we only talked about the filler and the wrapper before, right? On, on the first checkpoint. has to have 100% binder. And it has to be hand rolled, hand rolled and made with human hands to lie the wrapper or binder into one machine that bunches the tobacco. So you got you to gotta look at it this way, which I think is more elaborating on your point. So I'm going to repeat that in case you're listening to this on audio, right? 100% of the tobacco binder and filler has to be hand-rolled with human hands, and it has to lie with the wrapper and the binder, uh, and it can only go into one machine that bundles, wraps, or caps any of the individual uh, cigars. And then 100% of the leaf tobacco... Uh, from that one machine um, can only be for the individual cigar. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking more elaborate on your other checkpoint is that they really want to make the distinction of handmade premium tobacco, which is what we talk in and talk about week after week here on the Story Geek Show versus some of the machine made stuff. I, I I believe that's exactly what they're what they're trying to define yep. uh, because there, there are mechanical devices that are used in the premium cigar making process. Uh, you, know, you have you have bunching. Uh, they're 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 used by hand, but yep. uh, you know it makes the process faster. It's a mechanical device that actually bunches the tobacco um, and and. So that you can put it into the mold. So that I would I don't know if they consider that a machine or not. But then also most of your bigger factories use um, tobacco stripping machines, so you can strip the vein from the leaf. Yep. Uh, almost every factory uh, in DR and Nicaragua has that. Nobody really strips the tobacco by hand anymore. Um, but I think what they're trying to say is in the actual making of the cigar, the rolling of the cigar, they don't want it capped by a machine. They don't want it. Uh, rolled by a machine they want to see it rolled by hand yep uh, which i think is great. right so here's a positive point when it comes to right so here's a positive point when it comes to the fda and we'll end it on a positive note we now have a definition we now have a methodology 
we now have a potential cost of action and a, an exact separation from what premium tobacco is, all positives. And over the past week, five more senators have jumped on and had backed yeah. up Marco Robio from there before. So I think I think it's all it's 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 like anything else, man. It's moving in the right direction. Hey, while, while I've while I've got you here, Joe, I wanna I wanna draw my boy Harry here, Harry Savannah Hut, just to say hello. What's up, my man? How you doing? Hey, what's up, man? How's everything going? All good, all good, my man. Just enjoying a nice smoke with my boy Wayne. There you go. Make sure you have a bloody mirror. And make sure Wayne pays for it. Damn. I'm right, baby. It's all about the horse radish and the spices in it. There you go. Yeah, with some there bacon on it. There you <laughs> go. See you, man. Awesome, awesome. Harry so, Savannah, baseline queen. There you go. There you go. So I'll let you get back. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Thank you for joining us on the Story Geek Show. I wish you much success. Anything you want to flash me an email with, Wayne, or the Story Geeks listener, email me at joeh at We'll see you next week. <laughs>